Now that we have both the firebox made and the envelope made, we're going to start to use the geometry of the one to improve the other. So looking back at the firebox, I'm going to start off by changing the color of this to, oh, it's a firebox, let's make it dark red. Okay, so we can still kind of see through it, and it will stand out when I start to assemble this next to something else. So let's start a new assembly file, and we'll place into it both the envelope and the firebox. Okay, and let's see, we want to constrain the front face of this and make it flush with the front of this. Ideally, we'd have a two inch pocket of air all the way around. But when we go to look at this, if we made this exactly two inches, and then measured using our inspect ruler tool, distance tool. The distance between here is actually 1.75 on the top and two inches on the bottom. To compensate for that, we're instead going to make this mate here instead of being 2, 1.875. So that's the distance between here and here. If I check the top, this should also be the same. 1.875. Good. And that's because that this metal is an eighth inch thick. Okay. Let's also go ahead and constrain the side of this here to this side over here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll make an offset of 1.875. It is designed to be two inches bigger, but that's not taking into account the thickness of the material. So let's finish that. And now here's a trick for you. Uh, you have to close out of the other files you have open. So now the only thing I have open is my assembly. Uh, apparently I made some kind of change to it. Oh, I changed the color. So yeah, save changes. Okay. Now that the only thing that's open is the assembly, I can double click on something like the envelope and I can make a new sketch on this, but the other thing stays in here so I can reference it. And so I go project geometry, I can find where that hole is cut out, finish my sketch, when I go to extrude, I can cut just this part away and set that to be 0.125 for an eighth of an inch thick and return back to my assembly file. We also want to make a front face for this. Instead of going through and trying to measure it out and figure out well, how far up and how far over is all this going to be, we're going to create a part inside an assembly. So we've placed things before, now we're going to create. We're going to call this, uh, let's call it the front fa face. And this is going into your firebox folder. So make sure it's going into the right folder. You have the uh, good name for it. When you click OK, you have to give it something as a reference. So I'll just pick the envelope is going to be the reference. I'll make a 2D sketch on one of the faces of the envelope, and I'll pick this edge here. And then I can project the geometry of the whole outside part, finish my sketch, I go to extrude, this is a, a face that we're adding on, so this is actually going to be an eighth inch thick, 0.125. Okay, so we are adding an eighth inch material onto this, but it will be okay. Also notice that this uh, firebox, the lip from that is still poking through, so we need to fix that, because uh, it can't just cut straight through metal. So we make a new sketch on the front of this and now I'm going to project the geometry of the lip of the firebox and then finish my sketch. 
So now I can go extrude. Instead of adding material, now I can select the inside, select the outside, and cut to remove all of that. I didn't have to measure anything, and everything's perfect. All right. I also need to put in those holes. If you remember from here, it has these holes all the way around, or not all the way around, not across the bottom, just across the, the top and the edges. Okay. Well, we need to do that as well. So right click on here, let's make a new sketch. I'm going to flip this around this time so I can orient myself because it's not going on the bottom. And I'm going to project geometry so I can see where the firebox is. So I want this to be above the firebox. Okay. And I'm just going to use points. And actually, it's going to be even easier if I use lines first. So I'm going to use the line to draw straight across, draw straight up, and I can put a point right in the middle of all this. I'll do the same thing over here. Line first, straight across, straight up, point. So I'm not actually measuring, I'm using my uh, other geometry. So it's like if I put a horizontal constraint on this midpoint and line those up, and a vertical constraint on the other midpoint and lined up where this is going to be. Okay, I'm also going to have a couple of uh, dimensions here going across the top. I want them to be evenly spaced out. So if I were to draw a line in between them, I can say that the midpoint of this line should match up with the midpoint of the whole thing. So whatever distance I end up planning these to be spread out, I can modify and it'll be the same on either side. Okay, and I think I'm going to do a rectangular pattern using both of these features and the direction is going to be going down. Alright, let's space these out about um, four inches with the spacing and they're supposed to be six. And that'll end up right at the base of this. So that's looking pretty good. Those are spaced out four inches. Let's see what this would look like if we space this out four inches. It's a little tight together. It's not too bad. I might put in two more holes as well. I'll keep them lined up horizontally. Okay, and just out of curiosity, and there's six inches there. Well, this is still pretty good. And that's an easy thing to measure too, with six inches. Okay, I'm gonna right click on these lines and turn them into construction lines. So it's only used to help lay out the part. So you have to click on the line first with your left click, right click, construction. Okay, let's finish our sketch and we're gonna make holes if I don't pick any of them it'll select all points which is what I want right now uh, we're gonna have it the distance be 0.125 so it's gonna go just through the metal and I had those as three quarters of an inch 0.75 in diameter So now this looks a little funny to have it on the outside edge, but we know the reason why is because we know where the inside firebox is. Let's return back. Oh, one more thing. Let's right or double click on your front face again, and let's right click on the work plane and turn off visibility. There we go. It's looking much better. 
Okay, so now we've created a part inside of an assembly file. Should be something new for you. I'm um, going to save this here and we'll add another part onto it in just a bit.